activity two we need to look at the table structures and validation so let's quickly scroll down and see what they say i'm not going to go over everything i again check with your teachers i will try and upload this as well so trade one two three trade one we have to stick to naming conventions no spaces in the names the first letter let me zoom in a bit more the first letter in the name begins with an uppercase and if another name is supposed if another word is supposed to be in there for example num days n would be capital and d would be capital as well let me zoom out trait one trait two is going to be you have to set your primary keys and your foreign keys correctly trait number three you have to do your data types and here are all the data types that are normally used and beyond that we have a validation and then that's it so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to open the template for activity two actually let me scroll down and show what they have here this one's up okay let's just go to the worked example instead and in the worked example it says full marks were achieved so for this one you have to give a screenshot of the table in a design view so let's do that first. Let's go ahead and see how this is done first. I'm going to go ahead and open my Activity 2 template and continue from there. Here I have the location where all my files are. Well, most of my files are. I'm going to open Activity 2. Again, this is going to be an RTF, a rich text format document, but it will open perfectly fine in Microsoft Word. Table structures, right? All you have to do is open your table, go to Design View, and put each of them in here. So I think I have a database open somewhere. Here we go. I'm going to open all, well, let me close them. You don't even have to go in and then change the view. Right click on the table you want, go to design view, or you double click on it, it opens in the normal view, then you simply go over to view and it switches to design view. So how does this work? Again, open whatever thing you're using for screenshotting. There are a couple ways. The first way I recommend is pressing the Windows key that brings up the start menu, so that one there. Press it and hold it down, then press the shift key on your keyboard, then press the S key for Sierra. This thing should come up and you simply drag this over, this like so. That's it, done. This has now been copied so I can go back to my template now, my RTF template, and paste that one there. And this is the patient table. So I'm just going to put this above patient table right i'm going to do another method of screenshotting so let's go back to my database and let's look at the appointments table and now what you can do you can simply press the print screen button on your keyboard so press it once and that's it now in some cases this will come up but if you're using windows 10 for example it will come up with nothing and it will the print screen will just be saved right so again, press the print screen button and it will come up with the entire thing. What will happen when you go back to your document to paste it, you should have the entire window like this. This might be quicker for some people because you can come in here and crop out the stuff you don't need. Right click on it, click on crop, and then simply drag these black boxes. So wait until your mouse changes from that four arrow cursor thing to that black line thing. Drag up to the sections you want say roughly about there and drag in from this side as well then drag down from the top now you will have to make this larger so that it can be easily read so once you once you've done that you click onto the white space to get rid of the crop box again that's the crop box there once you've finished cropping click on the blank white space or anywhere off that image then click onto it again drag this out so it's at a decent easily readable size i would say so this is appointments table and that's finished let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other two so next is speciality table right click design view and again i'm just going to screenshot so uh, windows key for me shift on my keyboard and s for sierra brings up this thing here actually let me close this one first sorry brings up this thing here then I drag over the area I want which is just going to be that I go back to my word document and that was the speciality table speciality table and then I think I have one more let's close this one first and that's going to be the staff table right click go to design view or whichever way you want to get to it windows flag shift and s for sierra to bring up my print screen 
thing, highlight the area I want, go back to my Word document, and simply paste. Oh, this is going to be a staff table. So this is, oh, where did that go? Let me move this down to the next page. That's my first part completely finished, table structures. Be sure that when you do your screenshots, you do not cut off the data type set, um, part. The data type part must be there. If it's not there, then you won't get the full marks. So capture the entire thing. I made a slight mistake here. It shows both the patient table and the appointments table. It shouldn't really matter much because this, this one is highlighted and I've also labeled it here. But just take note of that. And ideally, you want it like the other three where it's only the staff table here that's open. This one is only the speciality table. This one is only the appointments table and this one should only be the patient table. So you don't want to show this in your screenshot, but it shouldn't matter that much, but just in case. All right, next we're gonna have the validation rules. So I'm gonna go in and do a screenshot for each of these. So for presence check, we know we're gonna need something that has is not null. So let's go back to our database. Let's go to design view and look for one of these. Now, as you can see, it, it has both the table name thing at the top, the, um, the table columns and the data types, as well as the general properties at the bottom. So let's look at that for a second. Uh, patient should have is not no. Let's go to view. This one, no. Let's check surname. Yep, surname has it, but as you can see, if I do a screenshot here, it's going to take up this entire screen, which might be a bit tricky to view. So what do you do here? I would say do two separate screenshots. So let me show you how that would look. Do one screenshot for this top half, well, this top part here, like so. And then what I would do is go to my Word document, which is not that one, which is this one. I would put presence check there. I will go back to my database again and I will do another screenshot for down here showing all the properties. So the field properties show everything down here. Screenshot again. And let's just grab this across like so. Just show it shows everything. I'll go back to my Word document and I would paste this just underneath that. So this would be just for presence check. And that's it, you're done. The second one we have is length and format check. So what they've done is actually join these two, which I guess makes perfect sense. So you can do that as well. On the template, activity two, there is length check here. And I believe, yeah, format check is down here. So we could just join them. So let me go back to my database. Uh, postcode is the one for me. I've got my length check here as being nine characters. I mean, that's overkill for postcode, but just to show you what it looks like, I think that should be seven or eight. I'm going to leave it as nine. Input mask has been set here. So that's letter, letter, number, space, number, letter, letter, right? So just like before, I'm going to screenshot that top half there. So again, to, to open the screenshot menu, you either press the print screen button on your keyboard or you press Windows, Shift and S. And that brings up this option here. I'm going to go back to my template. I'm going to paste it here. Let's just move this down to the next page. And I'm going to go back and get the properties section as well. So I'm going to go down here, open my print screen menu and just grab everything. Now I like to grab that top where it says field properties there. Probably not a necessity, but I like to grab it. Go back to my Word document template, pa oh, paste it and there we have it. Now. You can shrink these to make them a bit neater, but I'm going to leave it big just so it's it's very clear, very easy to read. The next one we have is value lookup, but I think they've made a slight mistake here. Maybe I've made a mistake, but a value lookup is essentially a lookup list where you simply select from a list of things you have, the one you want to choose. This looks to me like a range check where it's saying between 3 and 10. So you can only type 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10. So I'm going to ignore what they have here for now, but a value lookup is going to be a drop-down list, essentially. So let me go back to my database here. And which one has a drop-down list? Maybe patient type? No? Uh, let's go over to lookup. Yes, patient type does have a value list. So now what I would do here, I would screenshot both things. If you wanted to show the is not null, so the presence check, I would screenshot this section. 
or if you just wanted to show the value lookup, I would screenshot this section here. So just like before, patient table, open my screenshot thing, screenshot the name at the top with the data types. Patient type is clearly highlighted there because it's the one in yellow, right? I'm going to go back to my Word document for activity two. Uh, this was a value lookup or range check. So it did say or, so either one could be used, but they labeled it wrong. They put value lookup when it was actually range check. It's going to do that. Press enter, go back to my database and screenshot the bottom part as well. It's going to leave out the properties thing for now. And there we go. Go back to my Word document and just paste this in. And this is value lookup, not range check. So as I've said before, this was actually a range check. My database didn't have one. So if you have something like this, anything that has a range, so between X and Y, you could use that perfectly fine. In my database, I quickly created test num age, for example, that was data time number. And down here, you can see it says between one and 130. So, be so you're between the age of a one and 130. I think the oldest recorded person was 130. So I just chose that number because of that. Screenshot open this oh actually let me close my other tables because i don't want them to be in my screenshot it makes it look a bit messy so close that this is still open on test num age yep screenshot this grab the top half go back to my word document and i'm going to leave that one as a value lookup i'm going to put this one as the range check paste that there for now go back to my database and i'm going to screenshot the bottom half now so just grab this whole section here, back to my database, paste that and do that. Now I'm going to cut or move this part from here. You will not need both value and range. You only need one of them, but I'm doing both of them just so you guys see how it's done. Why can't I click? Okay, let's click on that. There we go. Range check. Make that bold as well. There we go. So value lookup screenshot done range check screenshot done next we have the table lookup it says any foreign key so all this is you're going to look at the table lookup that we did quite a few videos back where you actually choose from the drop down list still but you actually pick the values you want from another table so simple basic normal screenshot i'm going to go back to my database um, i happen to find one and under patient id because again, patient ID is not something that's going to be any of any use to anyone. So when you select patient ID and you actually click on the drop down menu, it's going to come up with more information, more than just patient ID. Because patient ID 12596234 doesn't mean anything to anyone who hasn't memorized over, I guess, a million patient IDs. So just like before, screenshot the top half, do that. I'm going to go back to my Word document, activity two, table lookup, paste it here, press enter, move down one, back to my database, and you're going to screenshot the part that says lookup, not general. So you're going to click on the one that says lookup at the bottom, screenshot that instead, because this is where you see all the query, sorry, the SQL stuff for the table query or table lookup. Paste that there, and that's it. Table lookup done or table query done, however you want to call it but leave them labeled and you're good to go. That is actually everything we need for activity two. So activity two, in some cases could take up one single A4 page. So activity two, let me go back to mine actually. Needs, let me scroll all the way up because my screenshots are really big and I've done one per line, let's say. So I did my design view of my patient table, design view of appointments table, design view of speciality table, design view of my staff table yours might be different but whatever tables you have do your design view show the column names and the column data types i um this also had the validation rule for each well for each one of the checks that they asked for so presence check so that's is not now there so i've done the screenshot for the top part showing the table and for the bottom part showing the general field properties go down i've got my length check as well I've done a screenshot for the top half and for the bottom half showing the general properties. Value lookup, slightly different. I've done my top half screenshot as normal, but the bottom half I've done on where it says lookup instead of general. So not general, but lookup instead. Under that, I've also shown a range check. 
typical one screenshot of the <coughs> screenshot of the top half and then a screenshot of uh, sorry screenshot of the general sections at the bottom and finally we have table lookup typical again screenshot of the top half and at the bottom half we do lookup and we screenshot where we have combo box table query and select so this uh, this here is actually some sql you don't have to know or type any sql in here yourself doing doing that method i showed you a few days back would get you the same result in here and oh format check i think i did format check at the top already uh, but let's quickly do that one anyway. 